Hi hey guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, if your dash uh, cluster is not working or your instrument panel is not lighting up and you can't see what's actually going on with it, the first thing you have to do is eliminate the basics and that would be to change a fuse. I have a detailed video on changing this fuse and the fuse responsible for the dash cluster on this car. I will link it in the description. And at one point years ago, that was the problem, and it was a simple fix. This time, it has gone way more complicated, and we actually have to get to the circuit board that's responsible for the dash cluster. I will also link you to a website that shows your fuse box and what every fuse is responsible for. And in this case, what we're looking at is a 92, 93, 94 Lincoln Town Car fuse box. And the fuse responsible for the dash cluster would be the number four fuse, that red one in the bottom left-hand corner. It's a 10 amp fuse. And in my case, it is positively not the fuse. Something else is going on here, and I've checked around the car, and I've looked at everything responsible for that fuse, which is more than the dash cluster. It's also the, the warning lamps, the warning chime, the airbag, and the EVO steering. It's none of those. There's no shorts in the wires. I've traced every single wire going into this dash cluster, and I can assure you, Something's going on with this circuit board. And after having all kinds of hope that something else was shorting out this fuse, it's time to face the music and rip this out of the dashboard. And as we're doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and start rolling the video on how to disassemble the front of this dashboard and get to the dashboard cluster. The big problem when these clusters go out is you don't know how fast you're going, you don't know how much gas you have, you pretty much don't know anything because it's the brains of the car. It gets even more complicated if you're connected to your insurance company and you get good rates and every month or so you have to report your odometer reading to your insurance company so their app stays updated and everything is right. Now you can't report your odometer reading because you can't see it because it's within the dash cluster. So what starts out as a, as a seemingly minor problem can quickly get very costly and may result in your insurance dropping. So what you're going to find in here when you pull this cluster out is a circuit board, just like a computer. And unless you're an expert computer repairman, you're really not going to know what you're looking at. And the big question is going to be, can you fix it yourself? And you might have the big solution of going out to the junkyard, grabbing another cluster, and putting it in your car. Uh, number one, it has to be the exact part number from the one coming off your car. So this really eliminates the cars that you can pull this off of. And number two, and here's the big question, is are you going to inherit the odometer reading from the old car, or will the new cluster somehow know how many miles are on your car and some people say oh no don't worry about it your odometer reading will be the same that's on your car and then I've gotten a whole slew of answers saying yes you're going to inherit the mileage from the junkyard car and that's horrible because if you kept the mileage off your car in order to sell it and to keep the value of the car and now you're inheriting 400,000 miles from a junkyard car and no buyer is going to believe that that's not really the mileage on your car. So there's very limited information on these issues, and, and this is the whole reason why I decided to make this video. I want to get these questions solid, real answers, and actually show you proof of the real answers. And there's no doubt in my mind that thousands of people have dealt with these issues over the years, but none of them actually reached back to help the other Lincoln Town Car owners and the people restoring Lincoln Town Cars. These are still open questions, and you would think with the information age somebody would make a video explaining all this stuff so instead of me sitting here bitching about it i'm trying to find you answers
there's two plugs going into the back of this cluster and there's one plug going into the front and that's what you see me disconnecting right now unplug that and go ahead and put a new fuse in the number four slot turn the key and see if that fuse blows if you listen closely you can hear it blow without pulling it back out if it doesn't blow and there's a good chance it won't then you've reduced the problem you've pinpointed the problem into either these wires or the connector going into the circuit or something within the circuit itself now all the other features that that fuse is responsible for will suddenly start working you'll you'll have chimes and all kinds of crazy stuff coming on now and working and you might be tempted to just leave this unplugged and drive the car like that because now you have no features. Uh, the problem with that is your alternator will stop working and your battery will drain because the regulator inside the alternator is feeding back into the cluster. And when you unplug this, your alternator will not know what to do. While you're under here, take a real good look at these wires and make sure there's no burnt ones or broken ones. Or uh, Just look for something abnormal and you might be able to get away with just fixing a wire or replacing a connector and you might get lucky here. Turn the key, put the car back into first and tilt the steering wheel down and you're going to find the four Torx bolts at the corners these clusters just those four bolts nothing else that will loosen up the cluster and you'll be able to take it out in one piece now this shift selector just kind of slides in it has a tab at the bottom just pull down on that tab as you're sliding it out but first take the bolts out of the cluster and get it halfway out and it'll be a whole lot easier to take the shift selector out now remember there's two more plugs on the back and you're not going to be able to disconnect them until you get the cluster halfway out and you cannot reach these from down on the floorboard. You have to get the cluster kind of halfway out and past the steering wheel in order to be able to reach them. in Canada of all places this part number is imperative you can't use a different part number if you try to Frankenstein this cluster uh, it's gonna fit and it's not gonna work you need the same exact part number and this particular car is a cluster for three cars. There's a 91 Lincoln Town car, the 92 Lincoln Town car, and the 92 Mercury Grand Marquis. For the Mercury, it was optional to have a digital dashboard, and it was a very expensive option for the buyers of that car. So even if we could find one in a junkyard that's used and we're going to inherit the mileage from it, it's going to be hard to find. We're limited. We're down to three cars. And it's not. It's not like you can go out and buy this brand new. And there's no manufacturers that copies it and sells it. So it leaves us with two options: either get this one fixed, or fix it yourself.
from the start, I didn't think I could find this with a visual check. Circuit boards are obviously very complicated, and they're multi-layered, and a lot of what's going on is underneath the surface. So that right there appears to be the problem. Uh, here's a good look at it. When I first took this board out, I always consult, when I'm in over my head on electrical stuff, and terrible I'm with electric, I consult with my buddy Mark, and so I took it out and I took some pictures of it, I didn't see anything, and uh, but he spotted something right there, and he had me uh, take the board back out and take some good quality close-up picks, micro, whatever. That's so I did, and that's how we pinpointed it to this. Um, issue now is, can I fix it? It's, to me, it's a kind of a long shot. You're dealing with something pretty complicated here. Uh, so it's on to the next step, and trying to find somebody that can or even will take a look at um, I don't know. There's a lot of people that claim to fix circuit boards, but they don't mess with a lot of stuff. And this is from 1992, so... And out of a car, most of them are dealing with computer circuit boards and stuff. So, I don't know, uh, can the chip even be located? Um, can it be replaced? Is there damage around the chip? Um, which has me a little bit worried. So that's where we are now. Um, in order to drive the car, I have to put this back in and plug it up or the alternator won't work. So the battery will just operate the car on its own and eventually it'll drain. Uh, that's where we are in part two. Hopefully we will find uh, a solution. Uh, can I, I am really reluctant to mess with this, but if Mark says I can do it, I'm, I'm going to give it a whirl. Um, but that's if we can find the chip. Place or something that'll work.